because Teresa's not feeling very well, and uh, that's understandable. A lot of people are feeling sort of bad. My wife's feeling bad today. So, you know, this is God's house. We've come here for no other purpose than to worship him. We're not here for ourselves. We're here to worship him. And that's what I want to do tonight. I hope you're the same way tonight. And uh, is there any prayer request that we can mention at this particular time that you want to bring up, Sister Lane? Okay, praying for Linda Rayleigh. Certainly is. Let's pray for Jeff Longwell. He, uh, David mentioned on prayer line a couple of days ago that he was not feeling well and didn't have anybody do his service this morning. I hope everything worked out good for Jeff Longwell. Pray for him. And Sister Katie? Okay, Katie. Okay. Absolutely. Brother Jeff and, and Liz, is they going to be returning from wherever they went, the beach? Let's pray for their safe traveling, that God will put their heads of protection around them all the way. And I know he's got needs of his family as well as we do, so let's pray for the pastor's needs and all. Elaine? And that I saw Brother David. Uh, I was making a, a stop at, uh, at Rick's Body Shop uh, Friday, and David was there. David was bringing back a loaner car. He had... His van you know, got wrecked, so they fixed his van, and he came to pick his van up, and I met him there uh, Friday, had a talk with him, and he said that his job was pulling him down to Florida this weekend, so pray for him. He needs our prayers. Brother Frank. Elaine Carter. I know Elaine Carter, yeah. Sister Elaine. Okay, Sister Elaine, if you're looking or listening, we, we're praying for you, honey. We really are. Brother Larry. Reggie, okay. Okay, Larry, sister in law, brother. Okay. Okay, Sister Linda. Let's remember Linda and her family. Brother Chris. Amen. Remember his family, the baby, and all. And uh, anyone else? Elaine? Praise God, that's did it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Linda. Praise God. She's going back to work. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. He is so good to us. Sister Sandra. just seems to come back and come back, don't it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's pray for the family there. Everybody else okay? Okay, Jimmy? Dan. Yeah, Dan Thompson. Definitely, Dan Thompson. Amen, sister. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what. Hey, man. He's going to do it again. Oh, dear God. The Holy Ghost really covered us up this morning. Yes, it did. Brother Walt, yes, it sure did. Hey, man. We all enjoyed that message this morning, I'm sure. And, uh God's got some great things for us. I don't know about y'all, but I feel so good when the Holy Ghost just takes over. And you know, if you've never had the tickling inside and electricity hit you, my goodness, you need it. If you haven't gotten it, you need to ask the Lord to let you search your soul and find that Holy Ghost in you because it's in you. I tell you, I, sometimes I'm just sitting and just thinking about the Word of God and all of a sudden, electricity hits me. I had a grandma in Cherville when I grew up, Grandma Cook, bless her heart. She she had broken her uh, hand on, they run a little old 
uh, concession stand in their home at one time. And back then, uh, you took a Coca-Cola ball and put the cap on the edge of a table and hit it like that, knocked the cap off of it. And she done it one time and it broke, cracked her bone in her hand. And her hands, she took a little disease and her hands was like that and she lived to be a good age. But she'd be sitting in her chair, uh, she's chair bound, and all of a sudden she's, hey man, shout, you know. Say, Grandma, what's going on? She said, the Holy Ghost got a hold of me. I never will forget that. I like it, y'all. And we all need that. We all need it. So let's go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a wonderful word, Brother Walt. Well, God wants us to be the very best. And how do we get instruction by reading his word? It tells us what God wants from us, okay? Brother Larry, would you lead off in prayer for us tonight? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, dear God, let the Holy Ghost fall, dear God. Open up our hearts, dear God. Oh, open up our hearts, dear God, that we might know. Oh, we might know. Thank you, Heavenly Father, dear God. Oh, we pray and pray for our families, Lord, dear God. Thank you, praise God. Amen, dear God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, precious Heavenly Father, thank you. Oh, praise you, Lord. Take a hold of this service tonight, dear God. Oh, dear God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, amen, dear God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh, yes, dear God. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Larry. All right. We're going to sing a song to the Lord tonight. It's uh, page 192. Soon and very soon, it says on top of there that uh, the day of the Lord cometh like a thief in the night. And we all know that, um, how that would feel to some that's not ready. So we just need to get out there and tell everybody Amen. that God's coming. And I just thank him that he lets us know his word and reveals it to us. So. All right, you ready, Sam? <laughs> soon and very soon. We are going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Hallelujah, hallelujah We're going to see the King No more Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Amen, soon and very soon. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you. Uh, I believe I'm going to have to grab her glasses. <laughs> All right, we got another one tonight to sing for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
I, I need them. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Thank you, Sandra. Yeah. And you are welcome anytime. Come back. <laughs> yes. Okay. I know y'all know this. Uh, I can't even walk without him. Not one step. Yes, <laughs> I thought that I would what I wanted to be. I thought I would build on life seeking sand, but I can't even walk without you. that I could do a lot on my own I thought I could make it all alone I thought of myself as a mighty But I can't even walk without you holding my hand. So true. But I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountains too high.
showed me what I need, and I need him. And if everybody could just get that. Once you get it, though, you know it. you got to go out and tell people. And I'm not a singer, but I'm more of a crier than a singer. But God put that on my heart to, to help and do things. That maybe somebody will be blessed by it. But. feel the Holy Spirit here tonight. Amen. Hmm. Sometimes you don't even know what to say. Hmm. I, do, I thank God for being here tonight. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God for what He's already done and what He's going to do. I thank Him for His mighty miracles that He's already, you know, He's already done. And I thank God for the little miracles. You know, we think every day that just because we don't see big miracles that He ain't doing nothing. But it's the little ones that we forget. Waking up every morning, being able to hear, being able to talk. You know, we don't think about them. As I was coming down the road, I was talking to God. Well, more like I was shutting up and listening to God. And the more that he was telling me, the more that I was just getting fed and filled up. I got here and I told Brother Sid, I said, I need prayers. I said, he's got me in so many directions, I don't even know which way we're going to go. I said, but the only thing I can do is just put it in neutral and let him push me the way that he wants me to go. There's only one road that I can go on, and that's the way that he wants me to go. And, um... As I was coming down the road, he was putting in my soul more and more that this morning I had a little kid. You know, kids are the backbone. Amen. Um, he came up to me, and he was talking to me about some other stuff, and he was telling me that he was going through stuff. And I told him, I said, there's stuff that's going to go on in your life. There's stuff that goes on in my life you cannot control. You know, you put all this stuff on top of your shoulders and you can't do it. You know, you got to let God have it and let Him work it out because the more that we try to do stuff and the more that we try to, you know, fix what God's trying to fix, we're just going to mess it up even more. You know, I've done it. I've tried to, you know, fix my own issues. It doesn't work. It just makes it worse. Because then, you know, you don't give God time to help you. And the only way to get through anything is through God. And as I was sitting back there, God was putting into my heart. You know, you, you all know the story of David. Little David and Goliath. You know, he was such a small young man compared to David. And he was up there and he was trying to fight this man. And you know that if he went up there and tried to fight him himself, he would have been killed. But that was a battle that he knew he had to fight. There's battles that we have to fight every day. But that was a battle that he had to fight fleshly. And you know, he couldn't do it on his own. He couldn't do it. But when God stepped into the show, and you know, when God steps into your life, and he starts fixing everything little bit by little. You know, after a while, you're going to know it's a difference. And everybody around you is going to know a difference. But when God stepped into the picture, you know, all he needed was one stone. You know, he picked up five. But all he needed was one. And that's just amazing to me that he was already, you know, there was a little bit of doubt in his mind already. 
Because he knew that he was, all he had was a stone and a sling. So he picked up five of them because he thought, well, if I miss with one, at least I got four more to try. But he didn't need them other four. All he needed was that one. And all he had to do was just in that little bit of faith that he had, he knocked them right on down. And then he took his own sword. <laughs> Goliath's own sword and chopped off his head. And that's just amazing to me that God worked that out. You know, everything gets worked out for His glory, not for ours. It's never going to work out for our glory. I promise you that now. Whatever you try to do is not going to help God. Stop trying to help God. Because he's don't, He don't need your help. I mean, He does not need your help. He's got it. He's got everything in His hands. You know, the old song that when I was a kid, I remember the old song. He's got the whole world in His hands. And you know, when I was a kid, I just thought, well, that's just a song that little kid sang. I get to sing, it makes me feel good. But then when you become an adult, you start thinking about, you know, these little songs that you used to sing. And he does have the whole world in his hands. You know, he's got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got you and me in his hands. And it's just amazing that what God can do. And you know, the older I get, the more I'm realizing how much I've done messed up my life trying to help God. You know, I'm pretty sure if I just listened to God in the beginning, let Him take care of everything, my life would have been a lot better. You know, I've tried to kill. I, you know, I've tried to kill myself. You know, I've I've thought about it, and you know, I've been through that depression stages. You know, it, depression is. A hard thing to get out of. And I try to get myself out of it. It don't work. It doesn't work. You know, I've tried to... I don't need God. I can do everything on my own. I know I'm not the only one. You know, you try to get in that stage of, I don't need God. What's He got that I can't do? That's a lot that you can't do. You know, you can't even wake up unless He lets you wake up. You can't even breathe unless He lets you breathe. But let me tell you one thing. One small thing. Whatever you're going through, whatever the issues are, bring it down here. You know, instead of fighting for yourself, bring it down here. You know, talk to God. Have a little talk with Jesus. Because what He's, he's already took care of all the problems when He was hung on the cross. When He died on the cross, He's done took care of all these issues. You know, all the sins, all the burdens, all the pains, He's done took care of them all. Our flesh just got to realize that. You know, our body, the Bible says our body got to line up with the Word of God. And that's, that's hard to do mentally. You know, you start feeling bad and you're thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've got this going on, that going on. And your mind, it starts racing and racing. It won't shut up. But all you got to do is have a talk with God. Amen. Just to talk with Him. Amen. And everything's going to be all right. You know, it's going to take time. Stuff don't happen in a day. You know, the old saying, Rome was not built in a day. Right. Your problems ain't going to go away in a day. It's in His time. And that's why I was telling Him, I said, it's in God's time. And that's the hardest part is the waiting part. You know, you want everything done instantly. You know, this is a generation that wants done, that's things done now. You know, you got microwavable food. You got instant this and instant that. You got instant coffee. God don't work like that. Sometimes He does. I'm not going to, don't get me wrong. Sometimes He does. But other times He wants to, you know, use that to build your flesh. I mean, your faith. Because God gives you a lot of stuff. And the Bible says He won't put on more than you can bear. Amen. That's hard. Because then you, I start thinking, God, how much more can I bear? You know, I mean, I've been through this and been through that. How much more can I handle? But He knows how much. We don't know, but He does. And just, you know, we just got to keep the faith. You know, Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is a substance that things hope for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance. A substance. 
of things hoped for. You ain't got it yet. The evidence of things not seen. We hope. We hope that we all go to heaven. And we can make it to heaven through God. But can you see heaven? Can you actually see heaven with your own eyes? No. But with faith, God will show you what heaven looks like. And I didn't even know I was going this way. Good job. You know, God uses, God uses a little bit of things to, you know, make you, own, make you see stuff. You know, we, us preachers, we don't even know how hardly where we're going. God just starts filling up our souls with it. And I know I'm not sh- jumping and I'm not shouting. But sometimes God don't want that. He wants it to be just a soothed spirit. And as long as I'm following Him, I don't care. Amen. I follow Him wherever He wants me to go. Amen. And you know, I had one scripture tonight. And that was the scripture of little David. The, um, let me see. 1 Samuel 17 and 47. One little scripture. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with his sword and a spear. For the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into his hands. I mean, it's just a small scripture. But if you think about it, it's so powerful. He didn't kill him with a spear and a sword. He didn't come to him even with it. Because you can just imagine that. You know, David going up to this big old tall giant with the sword. You know, in his out, with him holding it, you know, it looks big on him. But can you just imagine him walking up to David, I mean, to Goliath, and say, I'm going to kill you with this sword. It's going to look like a toothpick to him. If he came up into his own flesh, he would not have won that battle. But it says, And he will give you into into our hands. You know, he's going to give you, he's going to win the battle for you. You know, that's that's what's happening today in America. America thinks we can fight on ourselves. You know, the president thinks we can do everything ourselves. They're not relying on God anymore. You know, they shipping everybody out for war. Some wars are good. But it's what you're fighting for. You know, we're in a war ourselves. We're in a spiritual war. And you know, it's the worst kind. Because you can't kill it with, you know... Guns and weapons. The only weapon that we have is the only one we need, and that's the Bible. You know, this is my sword. You know, when the devil comes up to me, there's something in here that God's going to give me to be able to tell that devil, and he's got to flee. And I'm telling you now, all you got to say is one word, and the devil's got to flee, and that's the name of Jesus. You know, if you're covered with the blood of Jesus Christ, the devil can't get you anyway. Because if he crosses that bloodline that God has put there, he's going to be a holy devil. And he ain't going to be that. I'm telling you, people, the devil's going to fight. And he's going to come at you with everything he's got. And he's probably already doing it because he's doing it to me. You know, when your baby gets sick, after the doctors done said it wasn't going to make it all the way. And then it comes out and it's perfectly healthy. And then the devil comes back and slaps you and says, Aha, I got you again. <laughs> you know, that's the number one thing in my life right now is my baby girl. Amen. And the devil knows that. And he knows that if he uses her, it's going to get me down. And it has. Fear stepped in. But let me tell you now, fear is gone because I'm not allowing it no more. I'm not allowing the devil to camp inside of me when I know the one true God that can camp in there and is going to stay in there and that's the only one I want. He's the only one. And he's the only one that can fight my battles for me. All I got to do is sit on the sidelines. 
and he's going to fight it. And he's going to win every time. You know, any sicknesses, he's got it. You know, when my uncle passed away, you know, it was hard. Because that's another loss. And loss gets to me a lot. You know, I love my family. I love my friends. And when one of them goes on, it hurts. But it's okay. Because the preacher said one thing at the funeral that day. He said, if you want to see him again, the only way you can see him is to be right with God. Because the old funeral scripture that everybody knows, absent from the body, is present with the Lord. And if we're saved, that's all we got to worry about. You know, we don't have to worry about anything that comes against us. Because one day, our reward is coming. You know, we fight and we fight and we fight to just try to strive on daily to, you know, be a little bit better of a Christian, be a little bit closer to God. But it's going to be so worth it in the end. You know, I don't know how much longer we got. I could go tonight before I walk out the door. God could come back and take us all home. I don't know. But I tell you now, when I do go finally, I can't wait to be with the Lord. I can't wait to be with my, my friends and, you know, the old preachers that's gone on before me that are already up there rejoicing. I can't wait to be with them. But just hold on a little longer. That's all. Just hold on a little longer. Don't worry about what you can't fix. Don't worry about what you can fix. Because just know that God's done fixed it. You know, His plans is already happening. You know, we just got to get ourselves out of the way. You know, our flesh gets in the way a lot. We just got to get it out of the way. I have a hard problem with that. You know, flesh gets down and, you know, your mind gets out of hand, but you just got to tell that devil to get away. Get thee behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And he's got to flee. You know, every time you make it through another little battle, you just blacken the devil's eye even more. And the more you make it through, the more he's going to get madder. But if the devil stays mad at me, I know I'm doing something right. The day that he stops fighting me and the day that he stops getting mad at me is the day that he's got me. And he ain't getting me. You know, I'm going to keep on running towards the mark of the high calling. You know, the, the, I'm going to keep running on that my last mile home. Because I know it's just around the bend that I get to go. And if I could just work my way there just a little bit longer, I can't wait. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a long-winded preacher. When God's done, He's done. I can't stand up here and ramble and ramble and ramble because you ain't going to get nothing out of it anymore. But I just thank y'all for allowing me to have this opportunity. You know, I thank God for allowing me to be behind this. You know, this is a holy place. Amen. The holiest of holies is being up here. And I don't want to do anything that hurts God and to hurt my testimony being up here. I love every one of y'all, and y'all just continue to pray for me.